In this video we're going to look at physiology from a slightly different perspective than that which you're probably used to. We're going to explore the concept of physiological complexity. The traditional way of learning about physiology and other subjects like anatomy is through a reductive process of breaking things down into manageable chunks. We learn in great detail how individual components of a physiological system work. We tend to consider those components at different scales, whether it's whole organism, organ, tissue, cell, etc., as if they were completely separate entities. We rarely consider how they relate to each other. We know that physiological systems are complicated. They're composed of many different component parts and we learn about each individually and maybe sets of component parts. When we're trying to understand how cells work, for example, we might look at an individual metabolic pathway like the citric acid or Krebs cycle and we break it down into its important steps. When we know what each step does, we consider that we understand the whole. Understanding that physiological systems are complicated, though, is not the same as recognising that they are complex systems. And complex systems have particular properties which makes them particularly important for health and ill health. So let's start to explore what makes a physiological system a complex system. Well, these systems are composed of components which are highly interrelated and interconnected. If we return to our example of metabolic pathways in cells, that isolated citric acid cycle which was composed of multiple chemical components is actually situated amongst a mass of other biochemical pathways. Some of its chemical components are actually shared with other pathways so that you can see now how interrelated and interconnected these chemical components are within the complex cellular biochemical system. Components within complex physiological systems follow simple rules. If we take ion channels for example, they either allow ions to pass into or out of a cell. And these components self-organize. They don't need to be told what to do by the brain for example. And of particular importance, the overall behavior of a physiological system is not proportional to the sum of the behavior or actions of the individual component parts. They're not linear systems and the output is something more than the sum of its parts. Another feature of complex physiological systems is that component parts often exhibit what is called fractal properties. Fractals are complex irregular entities that display self-similarity of their physical structure or organization in space and time and over multiple scales. The image on the left illustrates self-similarity of shape over multiple scales. Uh, if, as one part is magnified, it reveals an identical smaller version of itself. The image on the left is a computer-generated fractal, the so-called Mandelbrot set, whilst the picture on the right is not of a henna tattoo, but is actually a temporary phenomenon caused by lightning striking um, the body. Uh, it's called a Lichtenberg figure, but you can see that its uh, pattern resembles very closely that of parts of the computer-generated Mandelbrot set fractal. Fractals are very common in nature, and here we have examples of fractals in uh, the configuration of a river pattern as seen from space, the branching fractal pattern of trees, 
and the branching fractal pattern of airways in the lungs. Fractal branching patterns can be seen at smaller scales too. Here we have the vasculature of the heart on the left and of the microvasculature in a kidney on the right. Once you're aware of fractal shapes, you'll start to see them everywhere. This is a plate of my food, which includes rice, soy sauce and chilli sauce. As I was eating my food, my eye was drawn to this branching fractal, which formed at the interface between soy sauce and chilli sauce, probably because of an interaction between the components of those foodstuffs. This is all well and good, you may well be saying to yourself, but so what? Well, the significance of physiological systems being complex systems lies in the effect of altering or manipulating components within those complex systems. This manipulation can lead to so-called emergence of unpredictable and, and possibly unwanted system behaviour. And even small changes to those components can lead to massive or exponential changes in the system's behaviour. This is because of a so-called sensitive dependence on initial conditions, and this is the basis for what has been called the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect is a term coined for the suggestion by chaos theorists that the flapping of a butterfly's wings in one continent could manifest itself as a tornado or something similar in another continent because of the complexity of weather systems. What seems to be a beneficial property of complex systems is that their non-linearity facilitates dynamic stability and order, or the ability to be agile and respond to environmental challenges which affect the homeostatic balance within an organism. But that dynamic stability can only operate up to a point, and complex systems can then suddenly fail. They're said to be robust, yet fragile. Let's take a look at the electrical activity in the heart. The coordinated beating of the heart relies on an orderly progression of depolarization and repolarization coordinate, coordinated by the cardiac conduction system. And the color changes that you see in this computer simulation show that coordinated passage of electrical impulses through the heart colour changes indicate depolarization and repolarization states. But if we then look at a fibrillating heart, which has no effective pumping action, and see what's happening to the conduction of electricity through it in the same way that we saw the normal beating heart, there's a different pattern of spiralling waves of depolarization and repolarization, which are ineffective, and these spiral waves are fractal. So what we saw in that fibrillating heart simulation is an example of what happens when complexity in the cardiovascular system is increased and obviously ventricular fibrillation would clearly lead to death unless it was terminated by medical intervention. But reducing cardiovascular complexity can also be catastrophic. A heart rate variability is a fractal in time rather than shape but it's necessary for our health. It's reduced in sepsis and might in future be routinely monitored in much the same way as blood pressure is now. So accepting that physiological systems are complex systems and prone to being destabilised in unexpected ways means that we can start to find tentative explanations for catastrophic events for which we currently have no explanation. It might allow us to explain why it is, for example, that some people die when they're stressed in a particular way, such as being restrained, whereas others don't. Thank you.